Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on climatology. So in today's session, we are going to discuss one of the most important and favorite topic of people that is atmospheric circulation or general circulation or tricellular circulation. So if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for the updates. So now let's learn about this meridional circulation or the general circulation of our atmosphere. So now when we have learnt about the temperature and pressure bells in the previous lecture, it's easier to understand how this atmospheric circulation happens. How does it operate across the meridians, across all the surface of the earth, right from the equator to the poles on both the hemisphere. So air circulation, that is what is important and it is also known as general circulation pattern of the atmosphere. That is what we need to learn here. So the other names are what? Meridional circulation. Remember? the meridians are what of the longitudes right from the pole to pole so this is what is happening from equator to poles on both side how these winds are circulating that is what the meridional circulation or general circulation means and it is also referred to as tricellular circulation because there are three distinct cells on the earth that is of the atmosphere. So atmospheric cells are formed which leads to the transference of wind and movement of this entire atmosphere through this meridians that we study. So let's learn about this tricellular circulation or meridional circulation of atmosphere or what is also called general circulation pattern of atmosphere. So what is basically it is? It is simply understood as pattern of the movement of planetary winds. Remember, in geography we are concerned about spatial patterns. So this is why it is purely geographical concept in terms of climatology that we study as atmospheric circulation. So now when we say that there is an air flow, atmospheric flow pattern, remember from north to south or from south to north, this is what we talk about is meridian, right? So along with the earth's longitudinal lines, that's why it is called meridional circulation or perpendicular to a zonal flow. So this is what happens, right? So this is a particular location that is zero point, that is zero degree. And what you see is across north to south, what you see different zones of this air circulation. Right? So this is why it is known as perpendicular circulation or meridional circulation as well. And there is a particular pattern that you can see. Right? So in previous lecture, when we learnt about these pressure bills, we talked about what happens to the winds. From this high pressure, it flows to the low pressure. Right? Again, it goes up because at low pressure there is a heating, right? Insulation is maximum. So it hot air rises up and when it goes to a particular altitude at a particular distance, again, it subsides down. So it falls down here at high pressure, right? So this happens in this subtropical high as well. And then there is another high pressure belt that is a particular polar high pressure belt. And in between there is a subpolar low pressure belt, remember? So again, from this low pressure, wind subsides down here. So what happens, you see, wind is like jumping from one latitude to the other latitude in these cells that you see here, from high pressure to low pressure, from high pressure to low pressure. This keeps happening. This continues on the entire zones of these pressure belts and temperature belts along these meridians. So that is what is important to understand that this entire wind pattern, this circulation pattern is all dependent upon these temperature and pressure belts that we already learned in the previous lectures. So now let's understand what are the factors that are responsible for the pattern of these planetary winds or the circulation. So one is called a latitudinal variation that we already know of what atmospheric heating. So every latitude receives different levels of insulation and differential heating is there at every level. Then emergence of pressure belts that we have discussed in details in the previous session. If you have not watched that video, please go to the climatology playlist on my channel and watch that video on temperature and pressure belts in details. Then what is there? My migration of these belts also happen. Why there is a migration? Remember, because sun movement overhead on equator and then also moving northward overhead on tropics at different particular time in year that we know, right? So because of this particular insulation differences, this belts of pressure also changes, right? So temperature moves, pressure moves. 
that is how it is differently placed on the different belts then distribution of continents and oceans play a major role remember this is about albedo factor continents and oceans heat differently and cool differently also that continental area is lesser in comparison to the vast oceanic area so that is also important that is what creates a gradient for the movement of wind so that is important and then final factor that we see is the rotation of the earth remember the winds deflection on both the hemisphere in the northern and southern hemisphere this deflection because of the coriolis force and also creation of this subpolar low pressure belt where there is a dynamic operation of winds because of this particular deflection polar easterlies creation so these are the things that are related to the rotation of the earth which we understand through coriolis effect coriolis force effect so this is five reason five factor that actually governs the direction and the intensity and the pattern of these wind movement that we study in atmospheric circulation now one more term to this circulation is given as tricellular circulation as we know so what is this tricell what are these three cells look into this image these are three different cells the first cell that we see is from this zero degree from itcz intertropical convergence zone to this subtropical belt what is this zero to thirty this particular belt so this is largely a tropical belt right remember so tropical belt is the first belt or the first cell which is also known as Hadley cell so what happens here the warm air rises up in this belt and subsides here down so high pressure is created from the low pressure so this cycle keeps continuing here so this is one point where Hadley cell is important the first cell of the three then what we observe is the next cell which is this mid latitude cell right from this subtropical area that is about 30 degree to this 60 degree that is subpolar low belt in pressure belt we have learned so this particular zone is the mid latitude zone and it is called a mid latitude cell and the other name for this mid latitude cell is the ferrell cell remember this hadley and ferrell these are the names given on the basis of the names of scientists so mid latitude cell is called ferrell cell and then ultimately the third cell of this tri cell so this is the polar cell remember from subpolar low to this polar high again there is a circulation here so this is where the third cell exists and that is how atmosphere circulates through these cellular circulation so this is the entire pattern that we study of different kinds of winds on the earth so trade winds westerlies polar easterlies these are the major major winds that we study separately we are going to study in the wind system but for now to understand these cells operation we must understand that there is this circulation kind of a cyclic movement of this wind in these particular cells and then these cells are also connected through these particular zones of mixing right so Hadley cell is connected to this mid latitude cell here near 30 degree then near 60 degree mid latitude cell is connected to the polar cell so what happens it's like a relay race remember passing a baton to the next player and he runs so this energy distribution from this particular itcz through this wind system happens across this meridians right so that is what is interesting on earth that one passes the energy to the other the other passes to the other and then the cool air comes back and then again hot air rises up and it keeps happening so this is what we understand as a tricellular circulations so these cells exist in both the hemisphere like we understand that energy levels are similar on both the sides of equator so these cells are created in pairs as we know so now let's understand each of the cell and their characteristics separately so let's understand the first cell which is called Hadley cell or tropical cell on the basis of the name of George Hadley so the air at intertropical convergence zone it rises because of what because of the convection factor that we know hot air rises up it has a hot air because there is high solar insulation here right so it rises up and what happens here the winds are converging right so there is a convergence of this wind in this particular low pressure zone and then they rise together right so this is what is the major function that operates in this particular belt so converged air rises along with the convective cell that we know and at an altitude of 14 kilometers remember they starts moving towards the pole so what happens the winds that come out which rises from this particular zero degree latitude that we see equatorial area it reaches an height of 14 kilometers 
and from there it starts moving towards respective poles right so when it starts moving towards these poles because of also impact of coriolis force that we know right so what happens this energy is now transferred gradually here and then when it cools down it falls back here as a cool air in this particular zone as we know this is a high pressure zone so this causes the accumulation of air about where at 30 degrees north and south we know and that is where it is forming subtropical high pressure belt right so this is what is interesting about hadley cell so hadley cell has two edges two edges are one is this low pressure and one is this high pressure between one low and one high there is one convective cell that is the whole idea of this cellular model right so we have to understand that between a low and a high there is one cell so another reason for sinking of this cool air is when it reaches 30 degree north and south that this is a particular zone where cooling happens and cool air is dense it falls down gradually and the zone where this greatest heating takes place is also known as thermal equator now remember normal equator and thermal equator are slightly different why they are different because there is a movement of sun northward and southward overhead right it is a fluctuation so because of this shifting of this belt remember so because of this shifting of this solar insulation the thermal equator keeps varying from north to south it keeps oscillating between north and south that's why this thermal equator keeps changing and that's why there is a range so 30 to 35 degree is this particular zone as 0 to 5 degree is the fluctuation here so this 5 degree or 10 degree fluctuation keeps happening every year depending upon how there is a movement how there is a change so this is important to understand about the headley cell then further the mid latitude cell the number two cell and that is also known as feral cell or polar front cell so mid latitude cell has two other names feral cell and polar why it is called polar front cell because it creates a front area so what is this front area cold wind from these poles easterlies come here and westerlies come from this side so they join at these fronts so they meet at this front like they are at war so front is like that situation where two different kinds of contrasting nature of air meets here so we remember this is important front here that's why it is called polar front cell as well so what happens here now it is important that in mid latitudes the circulation is that sinking cold air is there right so at one edge what is happening the cold air is sinking down right that is important here and at the surface these winds are known as westerlies and cell is known as feral cell so remember there is a westerly wind here going from west to east direction so as part of the energy that drives the feral cell is provided by polar cell and headley cell both now remember this cell has two edges again this is a polar edge and this is a particular headley cell edge so what happens the energy in this particular cell is received from this end as well and this end as well that is why it is also called zone of mixing here right so this circulation in mid latitude cell that is basically westerly formation westerly circulation happens from the energy that is given by this Hadley cell as well and polar cell as well that is why it is mixed kind of situation here so feral cell theorized by William Ferrell remember the name of the scientist is therefore also called secondary circulation so what happens why it is called secondary circulation because they are driven by cells on both side so Hadley cell and polar cell are actually required to circulate this cell in motion so that is why it is called secondary cell and remember that is the reason it is not very strong it is a weak cell that is important to understand and at high altitudes the feral cell overrides the hadley and polar cells now remember at high altitude feral cell overrides it overtakes at high altitude which cells hadley and polar cells that is important to remember in this particular convective zone that is the mid latitude cell so further let's understand the polar cell so when we say polar cell remember it is a high pressure situation why because now wind is subsiding here and it is pressing hard here so what is happening it is becoming a high pressure belt so polar latitudes are cold dense air subsides here that we know already and polar easterlies are formed so this easterly movement happens right this is important to understand the direction of this is easterly so easterly basically coming from the east so that is important so this is called polar cell and at 60th parallel that is 60th 
parallel is 60 degree latitude the air rises to the tropopause so here the air rises up to tropopause and then about 8 kilometers remember at this 8 kilometer height that is the tropopause height here so at 8 kilometers what happens it moves poleward right so when it moves poleward then it cools down and again subsides down and that is why it is creating a dry high pressure area near the pole so that is important and as this air at this surface moves towards the equator it deviates towards west due to the coriolis effect so remember from east it deviates towards west why because of the coriolis effect now the air flows at the surface are called polar easterlies this is the reason because of this coriolis force they are actually directed towards west so the outflow of this air mass from this cell creates harmonic waves in atmosphere which are also known as rossby waves so what is a rossby wave this is created by the outflowing of air masses from this particular polar high pressure belt moving towards the western side so this is what is known as the rossby waves as well and that is why polar cell is important to remember now when we have already learnt about these three cells there is something that is also very interesting it is about zonal overturning circulation longitudinal circulation features this particular important thing that we need to understand what is that while hadley cell feral cell and polar cell these three cells whose axis are oriented along the latitudes these are major features of global heat transport but remember they are not alone they do not act simply like it's just air circulation so what is that temperature differences also drive a set of circulation cells whose axis of circulation are longitudinally oriented now this is important to remember that this circular cells that we see here this is what this is a latitudinal orientation here right but there are cells who are longitude between the longitude motion that is also important so this three cell is not just acting alone they also lead to what kind of circulation this circulation that cut across these longitudes so that is important and that is called zonal overturning circulation so warm air rises over the equatorial continental and western pacific ocean regions so remember oceanic area warm air again rises up and when it reaches tropopause it cools and subsides down so the same kind of circulation happens across these meridians as well what was happening here along these meridians so these are called zonal oceanic cells and remember these zonal oceanic cells are formed by the overturning factor of these major three cells that's why it is important so this specific ocean cell now here this specific ocean cell is important to remember as it plays a particularly important role in earth's weather condition and it was identified by sir gilbert walker and that's why it is also known as walker circulation and remember how it is related to this tricellular circulation because of this exchange of energy because of this particular overturning circulation so that is important here so in details we are going to learn more about walker circulation when we discuss el nino and la nina phenomena and also enso but for here remember that this walker circulation is what it is basically warming and cooling of the pacific ocean and then there is a circulation involved in the oceanic area right so atmosphere and ocean is actually linked in this heat transfer and that is where what happens on the western coast of Peru what is formed El Nino that is a warm ocean current right and there is also significant pressure changes in Pacific remember temperature and pressure changes happen so pressure changes are also known as southern oscillation so this is what we see is pressure changes happen so it is north and south fluctuating and temperature changes lead to this east and west circulation so these both east and west and north and south both kind of circulation happens here and that's why in combination we study el nino and southern oscillation which is also known as enso so in details we are going to learn in the lectures to come about el nino and la nina phenomena and enso phenomena but remember here in atmospheric circulation that atmosphere does not operate singularly or in isolation so it has an impact on oceanic circulation like walker circulation that was the point to remember here so now when in depth we have studied about this tricellular circulations the mechanism all these important factors that contribute to the climatology in the sessions to come we are going to discuss one of the most important topics in climatology that is about stability and instability of 
atmosphere. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep watching.